This is a Matchbox number 30 eight-wheel crane manufactured around 1965 by Lesney. Lesney produced many models such as this with permanently affixed axles. This made the toys extremely robust, but makes restoring a real pain. I have a ton of these vehicles I'd like to restore, but have put off due to this issue. Well, not anymore. In this video, I'll show you how you can remove and replace the axles on this type of vehicle. And since I'll be replacing the axles on this crane for this video, I might as well restore it. So let's take it apart. I'll start by using some end cutters to clip off the mushroom portion of the axles that retains the wheels. The axles are made of mild steel and are relatively easy to cut. The issue I had with this model was the fact that the wheels were stuck on due to the axles rusting. Rust is not as dense as steel, so any object that rusts gets a little bit bigger. In this case, the axles enlarge, filling any gap between the axle and the wheel. With some time and patience, I was able to remove the wheels and axles without destroying them. You'll notice that the crane and wheels also have a lot of rust stains on them that I'll have to deal with later. Next, I'll use a 1 16th inch drill bit out of a 2-56 drill tap set to drill into the post that holds on the crane. I'll then use a 5 32nd drill bit to remove the rest of the mushroom portion of the post, both on the crane and the center post. With these two posts cut, the vehicle easily comes apart. After everything is apart, I like to observe each piece to be sure there are no hidden surprises that I might have missed noticing before I took the car apart. Last, I removed the plastic hook from the crane. I wasn't sure how this was attached, so I checked out eBay for a replacement hook to see how it was constructed. To remove the hook, I had to push it in the opposite direction from the rope. I did this off camera as it was rather delicate and I didn't want to break the plastic. Naturally, the next step is to remove all the paint. This is where you can get into some real trouble if the wheels are not removed, as most paint strippers will eat away at the plastic. Before, I was painstakingly masking off the wheels and then removing the paint. Now, with the wheels removed, removing the paint is a simple task. After the paint removal, I'll give the metal a dip in the electro-polishing bath to remove the oxidation. This always leaves a dark gray residue on the metal that needs to be removed to expose the shiny metal underneath it. I like to use rubbing compound and a toothbrush to remove it, however, toothpaste also works. With the metal all cleaned up, I can wash the parts with soap and water and dunk them in some acetone to make sure that there's no oils on the surface. For the crane, I'll paint it silver, and for the main body, I'll paint it red. Yes, I know restoration usually means putting things back to the way that they were, but I seriously have a dozen of this model. Almost every bulk lot of Matchbox cars will come with this crane, so forgive me if I want one in a different color. So the paint will need about two days to dry, so while that's going on, I'll add the wheels to a small dish of vinegar to remove the rust stains on the plastic. If you want to also reuse the original axles, provided there's enough material, you can also place them in vinegar to remove any rust. However, you must remember to remove them after a few hours or the vinegar will dissolve them. With the paint dry and the rust removed, I can go ahead and start making new axles for the crane. Lesney used 1 16th soft iron rod for their axles. I plan to use 1 16th brass rod for mine. I'm using brass because it's much easier to shape, but what I'm doing can also be done with mild steel. To get the rough length, I'll use one of the original axles as a template. To put the new mushrooms on the ends of the axles, I made a tool. This tool has a small inverted button on one end and a 2-56 tap on the other. The tap is not necessary, it's only there due to my desire to have a multi-use tool. If there's enough interest, I can do a video on how I made it. There may be other tools out there that you can use in its place. If you know of one, please let everyone know below. Getting back to the axles, I need to cut each one to length. You can use a pair of wire cutters if you like, but I like using a bandsaw with a metal cutting blade as it makes a cleaner cut. After the parts are cut, I use some 400 grit sandpaper to remove any burrs on the edges. After the axles are cut to length and deburred, I'll take one and wrap it in a shop towel. I try to wrap it as evenly as possible. The wrap is to protect the metal surface. I will then place it in a sturdy vise, and you really do need a sturdy vise for this operation. After the axle is fixed in the vise, I'll use the peen on a medium sized ball peen hammer to upend and flatten the end of the rod. Care must be taken not to hit the end of the axle too hard as it could bend. You can see here that the end of the rod now has a flattened disc of metal on it. 
I need to change that flat disc to a dome button. To do that, I'll load the axle into my lathe. I'm using a lathe because it's easier to film. A drill press or even a hand drill will work fine. With the axle installed, I will turn on the lathe and then plunge the end of the tool into the end of the axle. I'll apply a moderate amount of pressure, but not so much that I bend the rod. When done, the axle will have a nice mushroom shape on the end. With all four axles done, I can now go about installing them and the wheels onto the base. The first thing I'll need to do is trim the axles down to size. I do this by installing both wheels on the axle and then making a mark on the rod where it needs to be cut, taking care to leave a small amount of the axle to mushroom over. After sanding off any burrs, I'll reinstall the axle and wheels on the base. I'll then place the tool in the vise with some shop towel to protect it. Now I'll place the worked end of the axle into the tool. This will keep the mushroomed end from flattening out. Using the hammer, I will carefully peen the end of the brass rod. Some painter's tape was used to protect the paint on the body from my bad aim. Now I need to load the tool into my lathe. Where before the axle was spinning, now the tool will spin. This part is tricky, but using a small metal block to support the mushroomed end of the axle, I'll place the other flat end into the end of the tool and then press with a moderate amount of force. Just as before, the tool will round over the flattened disc of brass. I will then need to repeat this for each axle. Here's how it looked after all the wheels and axles were put on. Each wheel spins freely and the crane rolls, or it rolls as good as any vintage Max box rolls. With the wheels and axles installed, I can go about putting the crane back together. For the front assembly, I'll need to glue it into place with some super glue. The original post that held this part was completely mushroomed away, by design, when the crane was put together in 1965. There's no way for me to drill and tap what remains, so instead I'll rely on the glue to hold it. The hook is easily installed by placing it between the two small metal posts on the crane assembly and pulling down. Unfortunately, the button head screws that I use to put cars back together is too small and passes through the hole used to hold the crane assembly. To fix this, I need a small washer. Since I don't have a small washer, I decided to just make one on the lathe out of aluminum. With the washer made, the crane assembly can be put on the base. Using a screw also allows me to set the swing friction of the assembly, where before the crane was very loose and moved freely, now the crane is tight and will hold its position. I keep calling it a crane, but it probably has a more specific name, so feel free to educate me below on crane nomenclature. And here's the final result. With the wheel axle issue fixed, you should see more of these vintage Matchbox videos between my normal videos. They're easy and fun toys to work on and are great for beginners to cut their teeth on as they can be bought for pennies compared to vintage Hot Wheels. If you've watched some of my older Matchbox videos, you know that vintage Matchbox are my favorite cars to collect. Leslie put so much thought, character, and detail on each model that it's hard not to love them. As always, let me know what your thoughts are below on this and any vintage Matchbox model. I read all your comments, even if I can't respond to each one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.